Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day. First of all, thank you very much for being here. We are going to continue our lecture on air breathing engine. For today's topic, gas turbine cycles for aircraft propulsion, we will look into the turbofan engine. From the previous lecture, we have gone through the criteria of performance, intake and propelling nozzle efficiencies, and simple turbojet cycle. In terms of the learning outcomes, at the end of the session, you should be able to describe the design point calculations used for optimization of a turbofan engine and also calculate the thrust and specific fuel consumption for the case of a turbofan engine problem. And finally, explain the four thermodynamics parameters for optimization of a turbofan engine. If we look at the turbofan engine, it was originally conceived as a method of improving the propulsion efficiency of the jet engine by reducing the mean jet velocity so in the fan in the turbo fan a portion of the total flow bypasses part of the compressor as well as the combustion chamber the turbine and nozzle before being ejected through a separate nozzle as shown in figure 3.15 so if we can see here so basically the uh, this is a picture of a twin spool turbofan engine. And let me just highlight the flow of the air. Basically, it started from the uh, left hand side. So we have the ambient air coming into the engine. Okay. It will, part of the air will go through the compressor stages and then it will go through the combustion chamber and then the turbine and the part of the nozzle before it being ejected to the environment. So at the same time, if we look here for the bypasses air, when it goes into the engine, it will be some of the air will be bypasses and we call it as the cold air and it will be uh, joining back the mainstream of the flow to produce the total thrust. In the turbofan engine, the thrust is made up of two components as I highlighted in the previous slide. It is known as the cold stream so we have the cold stream uh, thrust and the hot stream thrust from the core of the engine. So the previous figure shows an engine with separate exhaust, but it is sometimes desirable to mix the two streams, eject them as a single jet of reduced velocity. In the turbofan engines, they are usually described in terms of bypass ratio. Okay, so we have the bypass ratio and normally being denoted as a symbol B okay. defined as the ratio of the flow through the bypass duct or the cold stream to the flow at the entry to the high pass of high pressure compressor in terms of the hot strip. The bypass ratio denoted by symbol B okay it is the mass flow of the coal to the mass flow of the hot stream. So it is immediately follows that okay, the mass flow of the cold stream equal to the mass flow times the bypass ratio over B plus one and the uh, mass flow of the hot stream equal to the mass flow, total mass flow over the B plus one. And we can then uh, find the total mass flow, which is equal to the mass flow of the coal as well as the hot flow okay so for the particular case where both streams are 
expanded to the atmospheric pressure in the propylene nozzle, the net thrust is given by the following expression. So we have the component of the mass flow of the coal uh, stream, okay, the velocity of the uh, coal stream plus the hot mass flow times the velocity of the hot flow minus the uh, mass flow times the aircraft speed. Let us see the subtopic of the turbofan engine, which include the design point calculations, mixing of hot and cold streams, and finally the optimization of the turbofan cycle. In terms of the design point calculations, the design point calculations for the turbofan are similar to those for the turbojet. The additional factors are as follows. The first one, in terms of the overall pressure ratio as well as the turbine in the temperature, which are specified as before, but it is also necessary to specify the bypass ratio in terms of B and the fan pressure ratio in terms of FPR. From the inlet condition and the fan pressure ratio, the pressure and the temperature of the flow leaving the fan and entering the bypass duct can be calculated. So the mass flow down the bypass duct can be established from the total flow and the bypass ratio. The cold stream thrust can then be calculated as for the jet engine. Noting that the air is working fluid and it is necessary to check whether the nozzle is either choked or it is unchoked. If it is choked, the pressure thrust must be calculated in the nozzle section. In the two spool configuration as shown in figure 315 before, okay, the fan is driven by the low pressure turbine. And calculation for the high pressure compressor and the turbine are standard, like the turbojet cycle and conditions at entry to the low pressure turbine can then be found. Considering the work requirement of the low pressure roto, we can then find or write the expression for the uh, mass, time, mass flow time the uh, CPA, which is the um, specific heat capacity at constant pressure for the air, ambient air, which is coming into the compressor and the, the temperature difference at station 1 to station 2, okay, in terms of the expression of the mechanical efficiency it times the mass flow for the hot uh, flow uh, times the specific heat capacity um, for the gas and it is times the temperature difference at the station five and six, which is the, the turbine to the nozzle section. And hence, the delta T056 can then be written as the elements of the bypass ratio. Right? We have this uh, B over here, okay? And the value of B may range from 0 0.3 to 8. It depends on the type of, type of engine and its value has a major effect on the temperature drop and pressure ratio required from the low pressure turbine. Knowing the value of the T05, okay, as well as the efficiency for the turbine and the delta T at station 056, the low pressure turbine pressure ratio can then be established. If the two streams are mixed, it is necessary to find the conditions after mixing by means of an enthalpy and momentum balance. This is considered following an example on the performance of an engine similar to that shown in figure 315. Number five, the fuel air ratio can then be determined knowing the compressor delivery temperature and the combustion temperature rise. So the fuel flow is then given by an F, which is equal to the uh, 
uh, the fuel air ratio F times the mass flow of the hot region. It should be recognized that the fuel flow is based on the core flow, while the specific thrust is based on the total flow, right? So the fuel flow is based on the core flow, which is MH, while the specific thrust, the FS, is based on the total flow, okay? Just the M, which is, has the component of both the mass flow for the coal and mass flow for the hot region. It is for this reason that equation 3.8 that we have already gone through before is not valid for turbofans. Let us now go through an example for the calculation. The following data apply to a twin spool turbofan engine with the fan driven by the low pressure turbine and the compressor by the high pressure turbine. Separate coal and hot nozzles are used, meaning that it is being separated in terms of the exhaust gases. It is required to find the thrust as well as the specific fuel consumption under sea level static conditions. It is given here the ambient pressure at one bar and the temperature at 288 Kelvin. So you have to find the thrust as well as the specific fuel consumption. The first step is basically we will need to establish the values of N minus 1 over N for the polytropic compression as well as the expansion. You have to take note on the value of gamma, the specific heat ratio for air as well as the specific heat ratio for the gas and you may use the gamma for air which is equal 1.4 and gamma for g which is equal to 1.33 under the static conditions the to1 which is equal to the ambient temperature which is uh, 288 kelvin and to1 equal to the ambient pressure so that using the nomenclature in figure 315 you may then find the value of to2 which is resulted to be 337.6 kelvin from there you may then find the to1 minus t sorry to2 minus to1 okay which is uh, come out to be 49.6 Kelvin, and then you may find the pressure ratio at station 3 over station 2, which is 15.15. Next, you can calculate the TO3, okay, which is uh, resulted to be 801 Kelvin, and TO3 minus TO1, the delta TO3 to TO2, which is equal to 462.5 Kelvin. In terms of the cold nozzle pressure ratio, right? So we have a PO2 over PA, okay, the compressor pressure over the, the ambient pressure, which is equal to the fan pressure ratio. Okay, so we have the fan pressure ratio, which is equal to the 1.65 okay and the critical pressure ratio for this nozzle po2 over pc right so it is then uh, going through this um, expression you will get it to be 1.965 thus the cold nozzle is not choked so that p8 which is the pressure at the exit of the nozzle is, is equal to the ambient pressure and the cold thrust Fc is given by Fc equal to the Mc, okay, the mass flow added for the coal times the um, velocity at the nozzle exit. 
the nozzle temperature drop from equation 312, which is TO2 minus T8, can be obtained using this expression. Okay, you will get 42.8 Kelvin and hence the exit velocity at station at the at, at the nozzle exit is uh, equivalent to 293.2 meter per second since the bypass ratio is given as five okay, for this particular engine so you may want to uh, find out what is the mass flow for the coal uh, stream which is uh, come out to be 179.2 kilogram per second and the thrust generated by the coal stream is obtained as 52,532 newton considering the work requirement of the high pressure auto so you may then calculate the temperature difference between station 4 and station 5 which is equivalent to 409.0 kelvin and for the low pressure auto the temperature difference between station 5 and 6 can be obtained as 263.2 Kelvin. Hence, by knowing what is TO4 and TO5 minus TO5, you can then find the value of TO5, which is equal to 1,141 Kelvin, as well as TO6 to be 877.8 Kelvin you may then find the pressure at station 6 as follows okay so but you have to find the pressure ratio at 4 and 5 first which is resulted to be 3.902 3 uh, following through the expression of the pressure ratio at 5 and 6 which is equivalent to 3.208, you may then find PO4 as 23.5 bar. And finally, you will get the pressure at station 6 to be 1.878 bar. For the hot nozzle pressure ratio, okay, uh, for the PO6 over the ambient pressure, which is resulted to be 1.878, while the critical pressure ratio is equivalent to 1.914. So this nozzle is considered unchoked. Okay, make sure we are in the right path. And hence, the P7 equal to the ambient or atmospheric pressure. From there, you will then find the value of TO6 minus T7, which is equal to 121.6 Kelvin. And calculating the, the velocity at station 7, we will get 528.3 meter per second. And you can put the numbers inside the uh, for the mass flow of the hot region, which is equivalent to 35.83 kilogram per second. And finally, you will get the pressure, sorry, the thrust uh, produced by the hot flow uh, stream, which is equivalent to 18,931 Newton. Thus, the total thrust is a combination of the two, which is the cold and the hot region, which is equal to 71,463 or 71.5 kN. Right Now you have already find the uh, thrust value, the total thrust for the turbofan engine. The fuel flow can readily be calculated from the known temperatures. Okay, in the combustor and the airflow through the combustor, which is MH, and the combustion temperature rise, we, we already uh, can be obtained here, which is 750 Kelvin, and the combustion in the temperature is in 800 Kelvin, and from the uh, fuel to air ratio chart in figure 2.17, it is found to be 
uh, 0.0221. And this is the ideal uh, fuel to air ratio, the F value, okay? And the actual, so this is the F ideal. And the actual, basically F actual is um, given or obtained as 0 0.0223. Hence, the fuel flow uh, value for the turbofan engine can now be obtained as 2,876.4 kilogram per hour and the specific fuel consumption to be 0 0.043 kilogram per hour newton. Because of the nozzles were unchoked. Both nozzle meaning that the nozzle for the cold stream air and the hot stream air. The thrust could be evaluated without calculating the nozzle areas. Okay, if you still remember for the turbojet engine, for the choke condition, you have to consider consider the nozzle area, the component of the pressure associated with the area of the nozzle. So it is always good practice. However, to calculate key pieces of information which may be required for other purposes. So in both cases, the area can be calculated from continuity equation, which is equal to the mass flow equal to the density times the area times the velocity. So the density is obtained from the ideal gas equation, which is density equal to the pressure divided by the constant uh, R times the temperature, where P and T are the static values in the plane of the nozzle. For both nozzles, which is P, will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. The following results are obtained for the two streams. If you run through the uh, equation just now, for the cold and the hot, Okay, you can see that the static temperature for the hot region is slightly higher. The density is uh, lower because of the combustion process. The mass flow is higher for the cold stream. The velocity is much higher for the hot stream and the nozzle area can be obtained. The cold nozzle area is much larger eh, than the hot one. Okay, and in figure 1.12b, which I'm, go I'm going to show you in the next slide, shows the physical appearances of an engine of a similar cycle and bypass ratio. Um, at the same time, figure 1.12a shows an engine of a lower bypass ratio around 2.5. Okay, so this is the uh, figure 1.12a for small turbofan engine. Pratt and Whitney, Canada. Okay, you have you can see here the uh, bypass flow, okay, and the core flow, the hot region, is coming out here. Okay, so you can see. Um, let me just put it in blue color for the coal air coming out. Oops, I think I got it wrong. Let me just try to use an eraser. Okay, it's good. Okay, it's coming out from here. Okay, and then you have the hot flow, which is come out from the core region and the flow will mix together to produce the total thrust. Meanwhile, uh, figure 1.12b is a GP7200 turbo fan from United States Corporation. Okay, you can see um, a larger section of the uh, coal air. Okay, you can see here on the hot air will flow through this region, right? So let me just try to draw it so that you can see where is it coming from. And the for the coal region, you can see it is here straight coming to 
to D, which has a larger uh, surface area. So this example illustrated the method followed when a propelling nozzle is unchoked. So this is a condition for unchoked um, engine. While the previous example, when we deal with turbojet engine, showed a choked nozzle. Okay, so you already have two examples there. Note that at static conditions, the bypass stream contributes approximately 74% of the total thrust. At a forward speed of 60 meters per second, which is approaching a normal takeoff speed, the momentum drag, the mass flow time, the speed of an aircraft will be equal to 12,900 Newton. So the ram pressure ratio and the temperature rise will be negligible, and thus the net thrust is reduced to 58,000 Newton. And the drop in thrust during takeoff is even more marked for engines of higher bypass ratio. And for this reason, it is preferable to coat turbofan thrust at a typical takeoff speed rather than at static conditions. Now let us look into the mixing of hot and cold stream. Mixing is essential for an after burning turbofan when maximum thrust boosting is required. So to, to avoid the need for two reheat combustion systems, in certain cases, mixing may also be advantageous in subsonic transport applications, which resulted in small gain in the specific fuel consumption. This figure, 3.16 shows the mixing in a constant area duct, right? The hot and cold flow beginning to mix at plane A and with complete mixing achieved by plane B as shown here, right? So you have the cold air coming through, coming through the bypass, okay? And then the hot region air going through the core will meet and mix with the with the coal air. So basically it will be mixed there. Okay. To produce the main flow. In terms of the optimization of the turbofan cycle, the designers of turbofans have four thermodynamic parameters to consider. Right? The first one is overall pressure ratio, second one is turbine inlet temperature, and then we have the bypass ratio and fan pressure ratio. Optimization of the cycle is complex, but the basic principle can be easily understood. If we start with the lower value of the fan pressure ratio, right? So lower value of FPR, the fan thrust will be small. And the work extracted from the low pressure turbine will also be small. Thus, little energy will be extracted from the hot stream and large value of the hot thrust will result. As the fan pressure ratio is raised, it is evident that the fan thrust will increase and the hot thrust will decrease. Okay, you can see here the fan thrust will increase while the hot thrust decreases if you have FPR to be raised. A typical variation of the specific thrust and the specific fuel consumption with the fan pressure ratio for a range of turbine temperature is shown here in three, figure 3.17. This is an optimization of fan pressure ratio where you have uh, two plot here. One is for the specific fuel consumption with the fan pressure ratio as the specific fuel consumption increases, right? So, sorry, as the pre fan pressure ratio uh, increases, it, you will have a reduction of the 
specific fuel consumption. Meanwhile, for the um, specific thrust, okay, as the fan pressure ratio increases, you will have a peak of the uh, increase of the specific thrust produced, and eh? meaning that at the same time the turbine inlet temperature increases. But you can see here there is a curve there. There is a maximum point of optimal fan pressure ratio. Okay. Uh, for different fan pressure ratio to, to have um, the appropriate value of the specific thrust at the same time the specific fuel consumption. For any value of turbine inlet temperature, there will be an optimum value of the fan pressure ratio. Optimum values of fan pressure ratio for minimum specific fuel consumption and maximum specific thrust coincide because of the fixed energy input. If we look here in figure 3.18, a turbofan optimization, a curve of the specific fuel consumption against specific thrust is shown. Right? We have the specific thrust, FS, and the specific fuel consumption. This is the bypass ratio which is fixed probably um, one value of bypass ratio it can be five it can be six or eight right as the increase of the specific thrust you will see that there is a decrease of specific fuel consumption and then further increase of the specific fuel consumption increasing the bypass ratio if you look at a different um, side of the uh, bypass ratio let's say we have a smaller bypass ratio here um, a smaller bypass ratio okay and this is a, a higher bypass ratio okay there will be an um, optimum value uh, optimum value for each each one of the different bypass ratio in terms of the specific fuel consumption Note that each point of this curve is the result of the previous optimization and it is associated with a particular value of the fan pressure ratio as well as the turbine inlet temperature. The qualitative results of such a series of calculations can be summarized as follows. So we have increasing bypass ratio will improve the specific fuel consumption at the expense of reduction in specific thrust, right? And at the same time, the optimum fan pressure ratio increases with the turbine in the temperature. The third item here is the optimum fan pressure ratio decreases with increase by fresh bypass ratio. At the bypass ratio of five, the fan pressure ratio may be below enough to permit the use of a single stage fan. So this particular figure, uh, looking back at the turbofan optimization, it showed that the optimizing specific fuel consumption required the use of high values of bypass ratio, resulting in engine low specific thrust. Okay, uh, this curves apply only to uninstalled engine performance. What do we mean what do we mean by uninstalled engine performance is basically the engine is not installed in the uh, port or the wing eh, on the on the aircraft. It is a, a, a static test that being conducted at the engine test cell and installation effects must also be considered for evaluation in a specific aircraft. That's all for now. Um, I hope you can try to go through the example that I have given just now and we will discuss further for the next topic which is the turbojet engine. Thank you and Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Ta'ala Wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.